here's the deal. God has given us secrets that if some city or some nation is not prospering, that's why he sent us there to do it. Now we can speak words. Yeah, I didn't get much action on that. We can speak words. We, 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 we don't have to say it's not prospering anymore. We got to say what God says about it. Say amen to that. Let's welcome Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Praise God. From Zimbabwe. Good afternoon, everybody. Amen. It's an honor to be with Dr. Winston and uh, Dr. Veronica. Thank you so much for your kind hospitality to the entire family and, of course, the leadership of this great and tremendous church. To all of you as delegates, thank you so much for coming out and uh, allow me to appreciate all those that are on the ground that make this happen. It takes a lot of work to have a meeting that runs so smoothly. We thank God for the very big engine uh, that we know is working, but is so stealth and works so wonderfully. Can we appreciate the team? Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to give you a brief overview of our message today. And uh, we put a guideline in uh, a little, it's like a 15 double space little booklet. Is that the alarm to quit, amen? Oh, it's an accident? Uh, okay. Uh, it's available at our, at our book stand. You can please pick it up. And Chi came over with a couple of books on prayer. Please breeze by and pick those up. Uh, I'm going to speak to you for about 25 minutes on the subject, the is factor. The, the is factor. Please say that. Yeah. Amen. Please go with me now to, um, we got a little guideline on our overhead that will help us. And uh, I'm probably... Uh, won't stick to the the presentation. We'll pop in and out of it. Please go with me to Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. And then we're going to jump into um, Revelation chapter number 1 and verse 4. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. <clears throat> For he that comes to God must believe that. That's boring. For he that comes to God must believe that. Yes. And that he yes. a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Everyone say the is factor. Revelation chapter number one, starting from verse four. To the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be to you and peace from him which and which and which is to come which is to come from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Uh, the writing could have been from him which was, which is, which is to come. But he says, which is, then which was, then which is to come. 30, 25 minutes and we're done. Uh, the word is, is a fascinating one. President Clinton did a bit of a take on that in the 90s. In the 90s, what do you know what the definition of is is? In that case, he was handling with uh, Monica. And uh, even though, you know, it, it, it sounded 
uh, he was trying to put an angle on it, I discovered that the word is is a significant word. The word is is actually a life and death word. The word is. The word is, uh, by almost definition, would be firstly to define a thing in a statement. To define a thing in a statement. And number two, the word is could be to make a prophetic declaration. And so to define a thing in a statement, you can ask me how is Chi Chi? And what I then tell you would then define what Chi Chi or how Chi Chi is. So ask me how is Chi Chi? Well, beside the fact that she's hot, Chi Chi is very well. She's very well. She's doing great. So I've just given you a statement of truth based on her situation. But let's just assume that Chi Chi was battling with some sort of sickness. And then you ask me, how is Chi Chi? I would then say, Chi Chi is very well. To you, I might be giving you a statement of truth. But what I'm actually saying, I'm releasing a prophetic statement that's not based on a circumstance. So every time you use the word is, you are saying two things, a statement of truth or a prophetic position. Oh, if I only had time, Barbara Streisand, if I only had time. The is factor. This is going to help us in the way we speak, which we've heard so eloquently and, and powerfully put, but also in the way we position our prayer. Because sometimes it's difficult not to state a situation the way it actually is. But we have to overrule that by, by making a prophetic declaration. I pray that God would help me. In, in this little car presentation. Uh, go with me now to Genesis 49. Jacob calls his 12 sons and he's now going to give them a position of what will be in the last days. That I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. I want you to come around me and gather. And so Jacob is going to speak on all 12 sons. But I want you to look at Genesis chapter number 49 and verse 9. He's going to declare above the boys situations concerning four of them. So in verse number 9, he says, Judah is a lion's whelp. In other words, I'm telling you what you are right now. Judah, you are a lion's cub. You are a little kitten. This is what you are right now. But I'm telling you that even though you are a lion's cub, there is the line of Judah that is developing inside of you. I'm telling you what you are, but there's something greater that is coming. To him which is, to him which was, to him which is to come. This is $20. This is is $20. It was a tree. When I sow it, it is to come. $10 million. One thing was a tree. It is 20. When I put it down here, there's 10 million coming out of it. Judah is a little kitten. But the fact that you are a kitten right now and the devil is messing with your head, you got to look back at the devil and tell him something is to come. Ah. Come on, Judah. 
Go with me now to Genesis 49 and verse 14. Issachar is a strong ass, couching between two burdens. In other words, if there's anything that the tribe needs to be carried, go to Issachar. He has the capacity to carry any load. He is very strong. I'm telling you a statement of truth. Look at Genesis chapter number 49 and verse 21. Naphtali is a young deer that is let loose, and he gives goodly words. So he's defining who Naphtali is. And if you need any wisdom, if you need to incline into areas of vision, Naphtali is your man. Don't go to Reuben because Reuben is as unstable as water. You need some fine words, go to the person that's functioning in the is factor. Genesis chapter number 49 and verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough. Now, when you are working in the realm of the is factor, you have to be so careful how you manufacture your words. For example, uh, somebody can ask you a question, uh, how is your Uncle George? And you can say, well, he's, he's an idiot. <laughs> That's not going to help Uncle George come out of effect of what he may be based on actions and choices he may have made. And so what you have to do is you have to overrule the fact of what so-and-so is. So if somebody asks me, how's Dreen? That's our oldest son. I can say Dreen is amazing. How is Tari, your daughter-in-law? She's absolutely stunning. So I'm not just stating a statement of truth. I'm actually positioning a prophetic track for where we want to see George get to. You can ask me a question, how is Zimbabwe? I can give you the facts. You can go to the Daily News. You can go to the Zimbabwe Herald. And you can read horror stories of certain things that are a condition in our country, such as high levels of unemployment. But when you ask me a question, how is Zimbabwe? I'm not going to regurgitate all of that negative stuff. I will tell you, Zimbabwe is the breadbasket of Africa. Come on, Holy Ghost. Because when you start functioning in the is factor, you overlook everything you see around you. And you start telling life and the circumstance around you. You might say one thing is here, but in my eyes, that's not the way it is. How is your oldest son? Your oldest son might be struggling with dex uh, dyslexia. Your oldest son might be having a challenge uh, in, in their life. The way you answer there is going to be highly contingent in the future of that child. That's why a school teacher is crucial in the life of your children. Because a school teacher can look at a three-year-old and look at the circumstance in, in that child's life and they can say, you know, my, my life turned at the age of 12 in the month of September 1969. I'd been put back in school two consecutive times and uh, of course there were so many words spoken over my life and Sister Doris, a nun out of Scotland, uh, said to me, Tudor Bismarck, uh, you might be naughty, but you're not a dunce. You are an extremely intelligent boy. And I see in you a significant future and stuff like that. I didn't know that she was talking to the only person in the room that was me. I started looking around. And then she said this to me, your future is bright. Something turned inside my head. All of that trouble and turmoil I was struggling with as a boy, I actually felt gears changing in my life. 
because a bright future started finding a pathway in the middle of a wilderness, in the middle of a Red Sea. That's why you need school teachers that can identify the isness in your particular life. Somebody must say amen. Oh, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Uh, look at Job chapter number 22 and verse 29. When men are cast down, here's the commandment, it is a commandment, then you shall say, there is lifting up. I don't care what the situation is, whether it's a country, a family, an examination, when there is casting down, when there is casting down, when things are falling apart, you are commanded to get up in the midst of the storm and say, there is lifting up. Oh, I'll get out of this thing one way or another. I'll sow a seed and make a way here. I'll offer a prayer. I'll tear a hole in this roof with my praise because there is a lifting. Give someone a little high five. Say, be lifted up. Yeah. Weeping may endure for a night, but there is the dawning of a new day. Yeah, it's going to turn at some point. There is. And so I'm looking for that thing to break somewhere in my life. Go with me to Genesis 18, verse 13. Let's deal with a quick case study. God and two angels are coming out of Salem. They were visiting Melchizedek, the king of, uh, the king of righteousness and peace. And so they're on their way now to Sodom and Gomorrah to bring judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. And so God has a bite to eat and he's having a bit of a human moment. And while they chomping away at whatever food was prepared, verse 9, God asked Abraham a question. Now remember this, when God comes into the mirage of the desert, Abraham says to Sarah, go and cook something because we have guests. Now God asked this question, watch this. While they're eating, where is Sarah your wife? That word was not a question of a geographical location. That word was a faith question. Because God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. For he that comes to God must believe that he... Now when he asked Abraham, where is Sarah? He was checking her faith level. Because God was wanting to give this old girl a son. But he couldn't reward her if she didn't have the kind of faith to diligently seek him. Sarah kept on seeing the years slip by. But God was coming to say, Sarah, if you will now implant the is factor in your life. Doesn't matter how old you look. Doesn't matter how old you feel. Doesn't matter if you're being criticized by everybody else around you. Doesn't matter if Haggard's walking around the village with a swagger. If you are a believer that I am a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, it is going to happen to you sooner than later. And then he says to Sarah, baby, you are going to have a son. Look at what Sarah's doubt produced. She started to laugh. Look at verse 13. Sarah started to laugh. But look at verse 14. <laughs> Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You got to get your faith up, Sarah. If you believe that God is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. If it doesn't exist, he'll make it. He'll find it. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. 
if you raise up your faith, it is possible. With God, all things are possible. If you believe it in this faith conference, it is so. It is so. No. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Uh, oh Lord, you have made heaven and earth by your great power and stretched out your arm. Is there anything too hard for thee? There's nothing too hard for God. You have to believe that God is. He is everything you ever hoped for and more. He is everything you need and more. He's a scope beyond our craziest and wildest dream. Jeremiah was told there are difficult things ahead, but there is nothing too hard for God. Join hands with someone and say, you agree with me? This thing seems to be impossible, but with God it is. It is. It is possible. It is. It is possible. If two of you shall agree on earth, it is possible. Come on, Holy Ghost. Our miracles are in this room because someone's faith has just increased. You have just seen possibilities. Uh, let me put another is factor there. Let me, let me put another is factor there. If you are feeling like it is impossible, invoke this is factor. The devil is a liar. Oh yeah, not maybe. The devil is a liar. And so is his mother-in-law. to Jeremiah chapter number 8 and verse 20. Jeremiah chapter number 8 and verse 20. Jeremiah 8 verse 20. The harvest is past. Statement of truth. The summer is ended. Statement of truth. And we are not saved. For the hurt of my daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black, astonished, and it's taken a hold of me. Verse 22. Is there a balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? The devil is a liar. Even though the harvest is past, and even though the summer is ended, but I want the devil and his mother-in-law to hear me. There is a bomb in Gilead. Oh, I feel like moonwalking up in here. Even though you may have missed a season, even though an opportunity may have passed you, even though someone may have taken the building that rightfully is yours, even though it seems like you have passed, if you can get to Gilead, there is. Come on, Holy Ghost. You will marry. You will have a husband and a wife. You will enjoy life. Shout, there is healing. Yeah, there is a doctor for your cure, uh, for your sickness. There is a cure. There is a way. There is, there is, there is. If it is to be, it is up to me. You can feel faith rising now. Genesis 28, verse 16. Jacob is running from his brother who wants to kill him. Falls asleep at a certain place. And the Bible says, 
And when Jacob awakened, awakened out of his sleep, amen, sleep is built into the system. Sleep is built into the system. Uh, it's just that we sleep sometimes at the wrong time. Adam had to sleep so Eve could come out. Abraham had to sleep so a covenant could be cut. Jacob had to sleep so he, he could get a revelation. But if you sleep at the wrong time, you could wake up in Delilah's lap. Don't sleep at the wrong time. I said don't sleep at the wrong time. But when Jacob woke up after his sleep, to see what he said. I didn't even know that the Lord is in this place and that this is the gate to heaven. Because you can be in an is moment and not know that it is happening. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest revealers of truth is the devil or the system of the demonic. Because when stuff starts increasing in terms of challenge and struggle, it's because he does not want you to see the opportunity. So anytime that thing begins to escalate in your life, ignore it. Say, there is a door somewhere here. There has to be a door somewhere here. And of course, you know that. Go with me now to Numbers 23, verse 19. And now a quick close. God is not a man. Doesn't think like a human being. Doesn't act like a human being. God is not impressed by certain things. Uh, sometimes as human beings, we try to bribe God and pay. God is not a man. And so God wants us to think on Godistic levels. That if he promises something, he's not going back on his word. So God is not a man that he should lie. If God said it somewhere in the past, in eternity, concerning your life, it is coming to pass. Please go with me now to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 19. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and they're safe. So when Goliath comes against David in chapter, in Proverbs, in uh, 1 Samuel 17, when Goliath comes against David, he's been screaming for 39 days and nights. On the 40th day, which is Matthew chapter number 1, because from Genesis to Malachi, 39 books, he's screaming, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to eat your children. I'm going to bite your ear. <laughs> David shows up. Isaiah 40. Verse 1, comfort ye, comfort me, ye all my people. Or Matthew chapter number 1, when David shows up, Goliath started cursing David by his gods. And as long as it was on this level, Goliath could outfight, outmaneuver David. But the minute Goliath made it a spiritual battle, David knew that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And so David said to Goliath, you come to me with a sword and with a spear. I come to you how? So when David, when Goliath was looking at David, he saw a, a young lad with a slingshot. But when David jumped into the name of the Lord, suddenly Goliath saw a strong tower. Stop seeing David saw a strong tower coming to him. Oh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of the Lord Jesus. Rise up and walk. If you jump into the name of the Lord, it is a strong tower. What weapon can stand against you? What force can stand against you? What hurricane can stand in your
your way. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy in heaven. Put on the name of Jesus. It is a strong tower. Let me finish with this. Daniel chapter number three. Jesus said, I'm with you always. American Airlines won't be with me. They'll leave me behind. That's why I'm hurrying. Daniel 3.16. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego said to Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The God in whom we serve. Is able. Our God is able. Now let me show, how, show you how terrified this devil was of those three boys. They built an image that's 10 stories tall of solid gold. The heat of that furnace could melt gold ore. So why in the world do you want to heat this furnace seven times more if the furnace has just melted gold ore? The body of a human being would be incinerated at the heat of the furnace that has the capacity to burn gold ore and make it molten ore to shape it into an image. But the devil has this, just in case this person really is who they say they are, let's just be sure to make this thing seven times hotter. Devil, I'm putting this stamp on your mail and I'm sending it to you right here. When your enemy comes against you, one way, he will flee before you. Now watch me, watch me. God allows that enemy to come against you because he wants to show you you have seven other options besides the one. And that devil is going to reveal seven other options that you didn't even know existed. The same way that devil came is the same way he's going. Because our God is able. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Put your hands together. It is so. Second Kings chapter number four. Shunammite builds a little room for the prophet. Prophet comes and says, baby, you want to meet the king? No. You want to meet the captain? No. He says, next year this time, you're going to have a son. And Dr. Winston alluded to that during the offering. The son is born. The boy is just very small. And the child dies. Sends Gehazi with the staff. And the woman keeps on walking towards Elisha. Now watch this. When Elisha meets the Shunammite in 2 Kings chapter number 4, he asks her a question. Is it well with you? My son has just died. You already got the news. She looked at him with brazen faith and said, it is well. It is well. Don't cry for me, Argentina. It is well. The end of a thing is better than the beginning of a thing. So in my prayer right now, I am releasing the is factor. It is well. It is going to work out okay. There is life because God is able. He is the most high God. He is El Elyon. He is the God who has shaped and reformed my life. Therefore, 
it is well. You got to put your hands together for God blessing you. Stand with me, let's pray. To him which is, you have a situation in your life that is right now, whatever it is. It's not the way it was. Oh, but there is something that's yet to come. It is yet to come. It is yet to come. And when you believe that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, he will reward you mightily. He will join hands with the believer. Join hands with the believer. <clears throat> We thank you for every miracle that's in this place. We thank you for every breakthrough that is in this place. We thank you for the privilege of struggle because through that struggle we experience your strength. We thank you. We thank you that you've counted us worthy to suffer because in our suffering we are perfected into excellence. We thank you for that. Bless every woman, every man, every business every person. We thank you for that. This we ask in Jesus' name. Please say amen. amen. Put your hands together for Dr. Winston.